What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel. I'm Steven and in today's video we are checking out more Lana Del Rey. We are finally going to be checking out the Honeymoon album. I know you guys have been waiting for it because you have been coming at me on Twitter, which is fair. Which by the way, if you want to, make sure to follow me on Instagram and Twitter. Links are down below as well. I am usually pretty active over there. And before we get into this video, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Leave a like on the video if you like the video. Let YouTube know that you actually like my stuff so they'll show it to more people. With all those things out of the way, obviously, I'm just really excited to get into this. This is definitely an artist that I have fallen in love with. I've taken a lot of time in between albums because I've been enjoying the albums on their own after doing the video. I've been a little bit stuck on ultra violence for the last couple of weeks, but I'm finally glad to introduce a new album into the rotation for me. So with all that out of the way, let's go ahead and check out this album. The first song is going to be called Honeymoon. It's got a very eerie sound to it already. How does she sing in that tone so well? Oh, I could live with those harmonies forever. So right away, I don't even know what we're gonna get out of this album. This is definitely something we've heard a little bit on some of her past albums, but this was a very um, cinematic song. I mean, I know that's pretty normal for Lana Del Rey anyways, but this felt a little bit different, even including the fact where um, at some point towards the end there, it actually had a tempo change and it felt very dramatic. Her voice on this is obviously amazing. I mean, I know I say that a lot, but it's something that you really have to take in when you're listening to Lana above everything else because the way that she just draws you in and then there's that harmonizing that's happening in the chorus there, everything is just hypnotizing. I say that very frequently when I talk about Lana Del Rey because that is what her music does. It, it brings you in, it holds you there, and then she harmonizes and you know hits this high note in a really low tone and all kinds of crazy shit. And that's why we love Lana so much. So right away, I don't know what genres we're about to explore on this album, but I can definitely tell it's gonna be something different. So I'm excited to get into the next track, which is Music to Watch Boys To. Such an atmospheric sound to this already. Whoa! Give me that again. So far, this album, um, I know it's only two songs in, but there's a lot more atmosphere to the um, instrumentals in this. Things feel a lot more spacious, and when you're listening to Lana's voice, it sounds almost like this like whisper echo going on around, creating this whole moment on each song. It's it's. It's something that like I'm kind of used to with Lana, but it's a little bit different in the way she's doing it in this album. I live to love you and I love to love you. Oh, I love how that just came back in. So I am picking up a more chill, slow vibe in this album. Um, not that there's anything wrong with that. It's definitely an album to vibe out to. I took the lyrics. Um, I love that bridge. I live to love you, and I love to love you, and I live to love you. And then she says, nothing goal can stay like love or lemonade or sun uh, or summer days. It's all a game to me anyway. I like that. It, and I definitely saw in the genius notations that this had a nod to this is what makes us girls, which you guys know I already like that song anyway. So I'm enjoying the vibe that we're getting from this album. The next track we're going to listen to is Terrence Loves You. I love those. This is definitely one of those albums that are going to be a vibe because this song was so chill. Just hearing this ballad style from her, it's very different. Um, you know, where every album she has tried something a little bit different within genres and experimenting with different sounds. And this one has a lot more ballad styles. I think there was a little bit of saxophone in the back. Very interesting to hear. My favorite line from this song was definitely, and I still get trashed, darling, when I hear your tunes. Um, I did check the little thing and said it could be about one of her ex-boyfriends, but I mean, people can relate to those kind of things, especially if you 
dated somebody who like this was their favorite record or I'm going to see their favorite band and then you see them and you're like all those memories come back so you can definitely relate to that lyric. Okay next track we're going to listen to is God Knows I Tried. Kind of has like Born to Die vibes. That higher pitch from her. The bridge of that track was everything. It, it was a little bit reminiscent of um, the Born to Die album um, and a little bit of ultra violence as well, just with that guitar riff that was happening. But man, the bridge made that song for me. That was, that was good, that was good. Okay, the next track we're gonna listen to is High by the Beach. Didn't think I was gonna get this sound on this album. This is like the album of bridges. The bridges on this album have been so good. I'm actually expecting that sound at all on this album, just judging by the rest of the tracks. That had a lot more of a hip hop influence. And I don't know, something about the sound just puts you right there in the moment. I said it in the song, but the bridges are really making all of this. Even though the songs are so great, like I love the chorus here. I just feel like each bridge, she's really going above and beyond. And they've been sort of the highlights of all the tracks for me. So this is another great one. Next one we're gonna check out is a song called Freak. We can slow dance to rock music and kiss while we do it. Definitely a more sexual song from Lana, and it, it's weird to say, but even a more sexual vibe. I feel like most of her songs have that sort of tension, but you could really feel it in this track because that is the message she was trying to put across. My favorite lyric, obviously I said it, but she says, uh, we could slow dance to rock music, kiss while we do it, and talk till we both turn blue. I love that. And I'm so glad she was able to pick up the vibe. And I don't know, this song, when you can feel the meaning behind it, even without paying attention to the lyrics, that's when you know it's just gonna hit a little bit different. And Lana does such a great job of doing that. Next track we're gonna listen to is a song called Art Deco. This was one of those songs where I don't think I paid very good attention to the lyrics because there was just so much happening. So her voice in this, it's pretty similar throughout the entire um, album so far, give, given um, not High by the Beach, obviously, but the rest of the songs all have a very similar um, singing pattern to them. And this was one of those songs where she kept like going into this higher note. So all I could pay attention to was that and the fact that in the beat they were experimenting with obviously like a really heavy bass and then they also had this saxophone thing again happening. So we're almost getting like this jazz hip hop fusion happening here and I'm into it. But they should have just named this album Vibes because that's what I'm picking up every single time. Even though I want to dive so far into the lyrics and I want to do all of those things, when I first listened to an album, in real life, I don't have the lyrics pulled up. I just want to go through and I want to listen to these sounds. I want to hear Lana's vocals. I want to hear the instruments. I want to hear the overall vibe again that she puts into the song. And this is one of those songs where like, it was okay that I didn't have the lyrics right in front of me because I, I don't know, I was just kind of catching the feelings of it. Next track is an interlude called Burnt Norton. So that was so weird that I just heard that for an entire minute and 22 seconds and I don't really know what she was talking about. I was trying to follow along, but I had this overwhelming feeling of calmness. I don't know if anybody else has ever experienced that with music, but 
even through the speaker, obviously if I had headphones on, it would have been an even better experience. But even through the speaker, hearing, I could hear her voice traveling both sides and it almost like created a, a space, like a sound space. And her voice with that whisper little bit that she was doing was just very calming and very like, took away my anxiety for a minute. Okay, I see you. The next track is Religion. I really like the drums in this song for some reason. They're very heavy and they're kind of muddied in the back of the beat, but they're really, I don't know, pulling everything together here. And this is another one of those songs where it's a little bit slower pace, which I feel like that's a lot of the songs on here. They're more ballad styles and we're getting a chance to actually experience Lana's vocals, whereas Born to Die, Ultra Violence, other than Paradise, um, those songs, those albums were very heavily produced and I think that's important because that's part of Lana. Like if, if, if you hear a Lana song like off Ultra Violence or Born to Die, you're, you're looking for that production that goes along with her vocals. But with songs like this, I'm glad that it's, it's taking a step back from the production and giving Lana just a, just a chance to sing. Because what she is capable of doing vocally is very beautiful. It's very different and her delivery style, everything about her vocals are just very different. And the fact that we're able to get that on a track like this, and really just a track like everything on here except for High, uh, High by the Beach, because High by the Beach had a little bit more of that hip hop vibe. I, I mean, I could do this forever. Like, yeah, it's a little bit slower, and I would say that I enjoy maybe a little bit more of the up-tempo stuff a little bit more. However, there is a place for this, and it's a really great moment for Lana to just shine vocally. Next track we're going to listen to is a song called Salvatore. Yes! I'm not going to lie, with the first 30 seconds of it just being a really slow instrumental, I really didn't know what I was going to get out of this. And even with the first vocals, I thought they were good, but it was, I don't know, kind of chill. But man, when she started hitting those little runs she just did. Even though I'm a nerd when it comes to lyrics and I want to know the meanings behind songs and stuff, I feel like with Lana, it's a little bit different. Even though her lyrics are very, very good and we've always read them and everything like that, there's just something about listening to the song and not worrying so much about the lyrics because you pick up a whole different vibe here. She could literally be singing the dumbest stuff in the world, but the way that she sings it, you're going to be hooked no matter what. And I think that's something that is very unique to her because sometimes you'll hear a song on the radio from an artist you never heard. And think about modern day pop music, a lot of it on the radio. Not people aren't really paying attention to lyrics. It's how they how the songs make them feel. Sometimes they're upbeat, they make you feel happy. The sad ones are produced to make you feel sad. Lana, I could feel whatever the fuck she wants me to feel because she can put so much into the emotion of a song that I don't even have to read the lyrics. I just get a moment to like listen to her voice and like let that go through my head. And it almost feels like Lana's music is more of a feeling and less of like a structure with lyrics and verses and blah blah blah. Yeah, that's all important, but she's got a feeling and not a lot of artists can do that. Next song we're gonna listen to is a song called The Blackest Day. Getting ultra violence vibes. Yes. Where'd that come from? This is the kind of song that I've been waiting for on this album. So while I think that, you know, vocally she just sounds so beautiful, these songs are a little bit slower and more ballad style, which if you know me, it's not always my musical preference, although I appreciate the beautiful sound. A little bit harder for me to get into. Um, obviously High by the Beach, you guys knew I was gonna like. Um, but dude, 
This song right here had every element of Lana that I like, and maybe that's just me being an ultra violence and born to die stan because I love those albums so much. It's one of those songs I didn't expect to be on this album, but I'm so glad we got it because it sounded so fucking beautiful, especially when she kept saying, oh my God, like that was the highlight of the song for me because it just sounded so great to hear that Lana sound and again, ultimately catch those vibes off of this album yet again. Okay, so the next track we're gonna listen to is a song called 24. One of those songs that I feel serves a purpose with the rest of this album. It's just a vocal flex. There's so many different vocal styles she does here, so many different runs, notes, you name it, she's done it here. And I like that the um, instrumental was kind of toned down, but not for the entire song because once we got to the you know last minute, maybe 40 seconds, very intense drums, a little bit more up-tempo. Lana like stops the instrumental all at once and then brings it back in much slower. There's just a lot of creativity on this one. Again, another chill vibe with a little bit of aggression and up-tempo. Next track we're gonna listen to is a song called Swan Song. This is such a good sound. I feel like I'm gonna be a little repetitive here, but you know, one thing that's interesting about this album is I feel like we could have gotten rid of all the track names. This album could have been called Honeymoon. It could have been one track just called Honeymoon and you could put the record on and let them all play through because I will say that a lot of the songs so far have very similar sounds to them. The tempo, the um, notes and ranges that she sings in, sort of the delivery of a lot of the vocals. And I feel like we could have just had one big song, which I don't think anyone would have been upset with. This song definitely, or this album definitely needs to be listened to as a whole from start to finish. Okay, the next and last track on this album is Don't Let Me Be Misunderstood. Lil Wayne did a remix to the original before as well. That track right there pretty much sums up how I feel about this album um, with this being a vocal cover um, with her own little twist on it. But this album in general is giving me a, a moment where she was like, you know what, I wanna make an album where I focus mostly on the vocals. We're not gonna overproduce this thing and that's how I feel about this. So this album has so many relaxing and calming vibes to me. I love how soothing Lana's voice is on here. It's almost like an anti-anxiety relief and I can imagine like having a rough day throwing this album on and just listen to her sing to you. The fact that it's not overproduced with the instruments really gives you that chance to just focus in on how beautifully she can sing. Even if you're not paying attention to the lyrics, just having that moment where you're hearing her sing to you, I think is something that we haven't really visited before. Um, you know, I keep bringing up Born to Die and Ultra Violence. Obviously, I love those two albums very much. Um, but I think this album definitely serves a different purpose. It was a chance to really let her just sing and live her life. And I enjoyed being able to hear just how beautifully some of these notes were. I mean, we heard different parts of her voice that I don't think I've ever really heard before. And I think that the main takeaway from this is that I focus so much on Lana's vocals in this, and I'm glad that I finally got a chance to just sit back and actually appreciate how beautifully she sounded. But overall, this album was definitely awesome. I love the fact that every album she does, she does something a little bit different with the genres and the experimentation. I cannot wait to get to the next album, which is Lust for Life. And then of course, after that, we're doing NFR. I can't wait to have done all of her albums because as an artist, she's got so many things to offer and I love to be able to sit back and actually enjoy album per album what we're gonna get from her. So I hope you guys liked today's video. If you did, please make sure to like the video. Subscribe to the channel if you have not already. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram and Twitter. Links are down below as well. And let me know in the comment section what your favorite track on this album was. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.